Well, what's up, everybody? New Never You here. Today, we got episode four of New Never You Features, and we got my best friend, my homie, my brother, Mr. Ja'Cory Norwood, a.k.a. J. Sox. What's going on, man? How y'all doing today, man? How you, how you doing, man? How's everything going? Man, just getting off work and just happy that you took time out of your super busy schedule to uh, come and speak with me and everybody else that's going to be viewing this episode. Uh, and that is T. He told me to tell everybody, not Hennessy. <laughs> we, ain't, uh, <laughs> we ain't getting lit today, at least not on set anyway. But um, Mr. Norwood, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you would, you know, just introduce yourself a little bit for everybody that doesn't know you. Well, uh, name's Ja'Cory, not... Jackery or any other mispronounced nations. Um, 29, known as amazing guy here for about a long time, over like 10 years, you know. Um, really good friend, basically my brother. Uh, not too much to me at all, you know. It's, I like normal stuff, sports, you know, going out, having a good time, getting a good laugh, um, family time. That That's... That's that's about the gist of it. That's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good interview material. I'm glad I'm not hiring, but if I was, I, you'd have the job. <laughs> hey, hey, I got an interview next <laughs> next Tuesday. Oh, for real? For real? Where at? Yeah. Oh, it's the second interview for Community Coffee. Oh, word up, word up, word up. Um, so. I asked him today, I was like, hey, man, uh, you want to come on the show and move this phone? Uh, you want to come on the show today and talk about a certain topic? And so we brainstormed a little bit and we decided we were going to do um, struggles of men in America, everyday life. Um, so I guess I'll start off by saying uh, from your perspective or for what you see in everyday life, or what you go through through everyday life, what what would you say is your biggest struggle in being a man in America? Uh, me personally, I I think I probably struggle with man um, just keeping things afloat, you know, right? Like wanting like the knowing that I'm secure in my manhood, but also you know like still having to juggle the uh, insecurity of like being vulnerable sometimes you know of like maybe needing help in certain areas you know or or um or even you know just just getting by like in life you know we have a lot of hope a lot of high and lows in like life and um some sometimes you know when you when you high you don't think you're gonna ever go low again and when you, when you do um as a as a man especially you got a family to take care of, you know, those, those laws can be detrimental to your manhood. Right. So I, I, I think um, the everyday struggle of, of trying to juggle that right there, you know, is, is something um, is probably near and dear to me. Right. Right. Um, now I know this, um, a lot of people that are watching this for the first time or maybe later on and maybe even repeat people that are seeing it, uh, we both, uh, didn't have fathers Well, I did. Um, but I didn't, if that makes sense. Um, I knew my guy, uh, my father, but he wasn't in my life. Um, and I know you didn't know yours like at all. So from that, do you think that kind of hindered you from, I guess, growing as fast into manhood as you would like to? Um, most definitely, most definitely. Um, it's been, it's been shown, you know, statistics, I can't, I can't think of, I think it, I think it might be 20 to 40% mm -hmm. of, uh, even men without fathers, even men who've, who've had, uh, mentors in their life have a 20 to 40% higher chance of, um, of going to college, um, having a more sustainable like life and avoiding, you know, things that, hinder us like a prison time or just being in the streets getting caught up with things that keep you from 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 growing 
Um, so I, I definitely think if I had a dad, and same thing with you, I, I think we had active fathers in our lives who were positive role, male role models mm -hmm. that um, we could visually see how to be a man. I think you avoid a lot of the headaches and um, head bumps we both had as, as young men in our lives because, you know, when you're, I think personally the most important uh, ages for, for, for a young man is between like 14 up until probably 22 Right. Um, maybe 24. And I say that because, you know, you're, you're, you're laying the building blocks of your manhood around, you know, the early teenager ages, you know, mm -hmm. and once you get out of your parents' house, um, for some is earlier than, early, earlier than others. But for me, it was, for me, it was like 20, mm -hmm. for me, like 20, you know, so you, you, you're trying to figure out, you're trying to figure out, what a man looks like and, and what kind of man you want to be, you know? Yeah. And if, if, if you had seen that growing up, you know, like you knew what direction to take versus someone like me who had to walk all different paths to kind of figure out what was, what was good for me and what was not, you know, not for me. And I think you have some people who are a lot older than us that still ain't figured it out yet. You know, you meet, meet 40 year old, guys sometimes who still don't know what who they want to be or who they are in like life and are still like lost and it's because they, they didn't have that guidance i think yeah and i think um that the guidance level is getting like less and less every day um because i think that um and i don't want to i don't want to disregard like the me too movement but that that has its place and wherever it's taking place at but I feel like a lot of that has translated into a lot of women and also men feeling like men aren't um I want to word this really really well because I don't want it to like come across it's like I'm dissing anybody but I feel like that movement the uh Black Lives Matter movement and all these other movements that just have just risen up um like if you don't partake or if you don't feel like you are behind these movements a lot of people um will tell you you're not a man because you're not standing behind uh these movements uh because you're not standing up for something and i feel like there's a lot of conflict with movements with other people's opinions with how the media display men now like even in movies you have it where the woman is essentially the man, like she's doing all the fighting, she's doing all the hunting and all that, which is fine. Um, because in some, you know, some cultures, that's how it is. And in, 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 in some households, that's how it is. But in the majority, like the, the man's supposed to be like the protector, the, the one that's doing his part of it. And like, like, like we both know, like a man's not supposed to do everything all the time. Because if you do that, you're going you're gonna to get burnt out. You're going to get tired. And you're going to get to the point where you feel like everything that you're doing is a waste of time. And I think there's just so many things going on, so many angles coming at uh, young men and even men our ages and men older than us that even if you do know who you are as a man, like you question it sometimes because you see so much and you're like, well am I really doing this right and I know that we had father-ish figures um I think the best uh father figure that I had was um I would say Matt Scopel and I know you had Bubba before Matt um so you had like more I would say more guidance than I did uh, as far as diversity in men but uh, I think they both left our lives at like a pivotal moment where um, we were 17, 18, 19, going into 20, where you went to the Army, I went to the Air Force. And after that, it was just like, okay, what's next? Like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Like, what society tells you to get a job, 
find a woman, have a family, and that's that. Um, what do you think that I would say society as a whole isn't teaching young men or boys about growing up into that role of being a man and stepping up and being like that provider, that protector, that, that anchor for the household? I don't, I don't know if society's not teaching um, young men that these days. I think, and it's mostly due to like the negative and the positive parts of like social media. Mm -hmm. But I, I think um, the message may, may come across true sometimes. But I think what society is moving forward when it comes to men now is accountability. Right. Um, I, I think, I think a, even, you know, looking back to my like childhood, um, you look at things where like, in my opinion, where like rape culture was at its worst. Right. Uh, in, like the nineties, when the music, the media, every, everything about like rape culture was considered to be okay. Fast forward to now, you know, in today's time where, um, people want you to be held accountable for what kind of, you know, person you are, no? you know, yeah. um, so I think it's, I, I I wouldn't say that it's not teaching it's not teaching young men those things it's, it's, it's holding them to a higher standard of you have to be more accountable for your actions and your words now mm -hmm. um, it's just when we were younger yeah um, but I will say I will say that um, I wish that our society was was bigger on holding us accountable versus like the whole council the whole council me you know kind of yeah. me, you know yeah um if i'm wrong i'm wrong you know but don't just shut me out from the the um, ability to grow you know right if I, if I have grown and i'm a changed person don't don't continue to pull up dirt on me from 20 years ago or 10 years ago something i said or i did when I was a completely different person, like my like my beliefs haven't changed, right? My mindset from that time hasn't changed. If I'm showing that progress, if I'm not showing that progress at all, then by any means, hold me accountable to my old words. Right. I'm still the same person. And if I've moved on, I'm a different different person, um, with a different mindset. I I, I wish um, we would stop, mainly men in particular. We stop looking at men and, and bringing up, you know, old things from their past. You know, um, that's I think that's a that's a big problem in our society today that we do. Um, that I think a lot of younger men are looking at, like when it comes to asking the questions of um, of who am I or who I want to be. Some of them, like you said, they they they. Um, they're looking at it and they're walking on the eggshells, you know, they're like, yeah. they don't want to say the wrong things or do the wrong thing, but they're trying to figure out who you are. And that's not real to me. That's not reality because when you're a young adult, male or female, you're going to do and say stupid stuff. You're growing. Um, and, and, and a, a lot of times we're not giving these young guys to actually grow. We want to hold them accountable and make sure they know like right from wrong, but at the same time, like if you do something stupid as a as a teenager, I don't like how we'll wait till a, a, a guy's completely changed. Like I said, to be like, hey, I remember you were thirteen. And you said and, and did this right here. You're like, I was thirteen, bro. And a, and a lot of kids are looking at that today, like, well, I don't know, I don't know who 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 or what to be or. I don't know who to be or what to do because I don't want to come off the wrong way. Right. And we've, we've seen that with, uh, what Kevin Hart, um, uh, Cat Williams, even yeah. Dave Chappelle and, you know, these comedians that they get paid to make light of heavy situations to help certain groups of people get through it. Um, and, that happened with, uh, I think it was Kevin Hart with the LGBTQ, did I say that right, plus? L LGBT community, yeah, you're close yeah. enough, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
where he said something in like his old old stand-ups and just so many people came out of the woodworks and was like well we want him to just apologize and say that he doesn't condone violence which is cool but like like you said like he apologized for it he grew from it and it was like the world didn't want him to grow from it they wanted to punish him for past sins basically essentially like uh that story in the bible where that woman got caught in adultery or whatever and all those men wanted to stone her for it like she didn't make a mistake clearly mm-hmm. she knew she made a mistake she knew it herself but you know there's some things you just you're tied to that that are hard to let go and since we're getting deep then you know i might as well go all the way in um <laughs> Like like myself, like I struggled with porn for a long time. And as a dude, like I don't, I, some dudes think it's cool to watch porn all day and whatever. And that, and you, I, I, you're entitled to think whatever you want to think. Um, me personally, I don't, but I was stuck in it. And I told you about it. Um, I may have told my mom a few times, but like nobody knew about how huge the struggle was other than you and you know man to man teenager back then um you know it's just it's embarrassing like you don't try like if i were to like if i was dating somebody i'm engaged now but if i was dating somebody outside of uh hope and Mm -hmm. they were like 100 percent against porn like me as a man uh, and I don't care how tough or whatever people say they are like, that's, that's, that's hard to confess to somebody like, Hey, I'm addicted to porn. I know it's wrong, but like, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm I want help. I want to get help, but I don't know how, like you get shunned for that. And mm-hmm. that kills your self-esteem on top of like, you are already telling yourself you're scum of the earth because you're addicted to something like that. Um, mm-hmm. So I I started seeing a therapist uh, for that, for um, anger, separation, anxiety, uh, because, you know, my dad was, he would pop up in pivotal moments, like funerals or whatever. Mm-hmm. And my psyche just couldn't handle that all at the same, like, I'm trying to stop being addicted to porn. I'm trying to figure out who I want to be as a, a young, young adult going into manhood. I don't have a father. I went to the military. Um, I was in the the movie industry for so long. So it's just, I'm absorbing so much different like cultures, so many different uh, beliefs, so many different ways of life that during the age of 19, 20, like I didn't know what I believed in at the time. And like, like you said, like it's, like, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a point where um, I'm going to have to, quote unquote, answer for all the things that I said about um, people, um, what they did, what they believed in. And I can't change those things. Mm-hmm. But hopefully me growing as a man and, you know, making videos like this, like people can see that hey, it's you're going to make mistakes. You're going to you're going to fail you're not going to get everything right. And I think that if we would have been taught that as um, teenagers going into manhood, it would have been a lot better, but uh, clearly we weren't and we had to suffer the consequences for it. So with that being said, do you think there's like anything, not just me and you, but like, people that have that relationship with men that don't have fathers or teenagers that don't have fathers or teenagers that are losing their way. Do you think there's like any plan of action that we can take as human beings being there for other human beings in the same struggles that we, we were in to help Mm -hmm. them progress to the point where a lot of the things that you and I went through, they don't have to go through and they can save that embarrassment, that pain, that anger and grow to the points that we should be at, Mm -hmm. but we aren't yet because of said things that we had to go through. Um, That's a long question. 
<laughs> no, I got, I got what you're saying. I, man, there's something that I, actually I've been thinking about lately. And um, I would say the answer to that question right there is real simple. It doesn't get the recognition that I wish it, I wish it gotten. In some communities, in some communities, it does. But I would say mentorship. Like I brought up earlier, um, I see, I've seen the effects that mentorship have had on younger men. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if you don't have a father in your life or a positive role model in your life, you know, um, I think the older men like myself and you and um, your mom's husband Walt. You know, um, and and other men in the community have to start placing our um our, our arms and ourselves in front of these younger men who who are in our same situation, you know, and and mentoring them um, because we can't be everywhere, you know, at this at at the same time. You know what I'm saying, but. I think back when I had somebody in my life, like you mentioned Bubble and Matt, when I had someone in my life like that or whatever, you know, if there were any times in my life that I felt like any kind of confusion at all about, you know, the way things were like looking or I was discouraged about something or I was just curious about something, you know, um, I could always run to one of them and ask them, you know, like there were several times we were in the car together with Matt and you remember I asked some, I, I would ask questions because I, I wanted to know because I didn't, I couldn't go to my mom or anyone else with these curiosities questions because um, my mom, she taught me, she taught me, you know, like the things about being a man, but she could never show me at all. She never showed me at all because she's not a man, she's a woman. You're right. you know? And, and um, I, I think we as men now have to start plugging ourselves in the lives of these younger kids who are like us that don't have father figures or positive male role models in their lives to help steer them from some of the misdirections that we experience, you know? Um, so that, I would say that, that that's, that would be the answer to just to the question that we have to start as a society, we have to start pushing, mentoring the fatherless on our society a whole, whole lot heavier, you know? Um, I guess it's, it's several mentor programs in Jackson that I, that I know about, um, but I only know about from research, you know, they don't get put out to the community, um, heavy enough at all, you know, like, um, a hundred, hundred black men is one of them. Um, of course, you know, like the well-known, um, little brother, big brother, it's one of them, you know, but they're only in certain parts of that community though. They're not. All, all over the city of Jackson, and um, they're not all over the city of, they're not all over the state of Mississippi, um, and it just goes to show that you know, like the, the the part of the community that they're in, and the kids who who are involved in those programs, being mentored by by older positive male role models, mm-hmm. uh, are truly affected by. It. They're really, really affected by it in a great way. A lot of them go on to, you know, be, like you said, better, better men than the ones who are mentoring them. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we have to start pushing that more um, in our society. Do you think that the racial divide that keeps happening is affecting that growth in manhood as well? Uh, I mean, like, I don't think so. I don't think so because... Me personally, I, I I think it's a obvious, I think it's a obvious um, different walk for a white man in America and a black man in America. So I don't think there's nothing wrong with whites, like a white man mentoring a black kid right. and vice versa. You know, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I will say there are going to be certain things about that mentorship that somebody's not going to understand because right. if, if like, like we'll take me for example. Okay. Bubba and Matt, we'll bring them, bring them up again. There's, there's some things about my, about my life that they would not understand. And lucky, luckily 
Matt in particular was very, very honest about that. You know, like he, mm -hmm. he didn't know what it was like to be a black man in America. He didn't know what it was like, you know, if, if you're um, walking through a neighborhood and, and people are looking at you like, why are you here? Um, like you're there to rob their car, break into their car or something like that. You know, like he, he just didn't know that versus if, 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 if he was if he was black, he more than likely know how that felt because that's a everyday normal thing um, for us. Um, so I don't think it causes any division. I think you know, like there's going to be certain things you're just you're just not going to be able to get from um, somebody who is not the same race as you um, when it comes to like them them mentoring you, you know, right. and. And, and, and that can be situational sometimes, you know, because depending on where that person grew up at, he, he might be in the same, same boat as you. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, that was, I'm not going to say there are no mentorship programs down here. I don't even know. I haven't even checked on it. Um, but I do know that I've done community service a few times. Um, and I don't say that to like get a pat on the back. Um, Hope's a big advocate of helping other people. And I would like to say that I am, I'm not as gung ho about it as I was when I was a teenager. Um, a lot of anger and resentment for people has set in because of so many things that have happened. And that took, I, I would say that took a place in my heart where that compassion was and I got to work through that but she's a big advocate of helping people and she tries to do multiple things a year to help people and um I've I've done a few of them and just to see the position of not just men but people in general and you know, you're handing out food, you're handing out blankets, gloves, socks, shoes, whatever, just anything you you have at the place that you're giving away. And like, I always wonder, like, if that was me, you know, how open would I be to go down there and to receive these free things from these people? You know, would I have enough love and respect for myself to know that you know, I'm struggling now, but I don't have to struggle forever because I think that just being a human, but uh, being a man more specifically, that pride of I can get through this on my own. I can do this myself gets me a lot of the time. And um, it's sad, mm -hmm. um, not just from my uh, myself, but like I, I see it in other men or young young men and that's one thing I, I I often wonder what can I do to help I guess alleviate that burden from other men because that's nothing I, I don't think there's ever been a time where like that's really been talked about and if it has I haven't ever witnessed or heard anything talked about that it's always you know be a gentleman treat women work treat women right and things like that it's never about like the fine details of of manhood like your manhood's going to be tested you're going to be called out of your name like there's there's certain things that you have to handle in a certain manner to get the respect that ultimately you want i'm not going to say you deserve it you should deserve it but just the way the world is like you just that's not how it goes um and i know my anger gets the best of me a lot of times because a lot of times i'm in situations where i am disrespected and you know after you face the same thing so many times you just get tired of it and uh i have to get better about that because you know people are always watching and as being a man, I want to be that example for the other people, men, teenagers, whatever, boys, um, 
to know that, you know, popping off at the handle, getting a gun, shooting, stabbing, killing people. That's not how you do things. There's other way to there's other ways to do it outside of what's on the evening news or in gangster movies or music videos or whatever. Um, and maybe that's something I can do on this channel to, um, you know, promote positivity. Whereas, you know, the majority of things that come out now are negative. Um, and I know you've always been like, you've always had a heart for people. Um, ever since I met you, almost 20 years ago at this point. It's, it's, it's been a while. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been, we, we get old too. <laughs> yeah, like I'm going bald. It's just, it's going. I'll be 30, I'll be 30 this year, so it's, 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 it's been a while. Oh. Yeah, it's been a minute. Um, but I think that, I think that if anybody would figure it out, it'd definitely be you because you've you've always had that heart for people. You've always wanted to be the man that, not really gets recognition for doing the right thing, but recognize yourself for doing the right thing, if that makes sense. Um, like you've never been the person that needed motivation or a pat on the back to get something done. If it needed to be done, you just did it. And I think that um, that's a very, I think that's the trait you need to um, to progress and to become a man like that's something you have to learn how to do because you're not always going to get that appreciation that pat on the back that thank you that i appreciate you going out of your way to help me you're not always going to get that and i've seen you go through situations where you should have got that and i know you needed it um but you didn't get it but you didn't stop and um like I've always looked up to you in that aspect because that's something I've never been able to do. Like if I'm not getting the appreciation, I'm stopping. Like I'm done. Like I'm, I'm not gonna waste my time. Not for me. Like this ain't my calling. Um. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh no! I just, I was just, I was just gonna say. I think that for me, probably comes from. Um wanting to give and not expecting anything, man, you know? Uh, wanting to give and not expect it. It's hard to be that way, and it, and it does suck sometimes, but I, just, I feel like if you giving something, you give, you, you give it out of the kindness of your heart, you know, um, because you want to do it. You don't, you don't give it because, you, you know, you want the person to um, – be, be give you something back in return mm -hmm. now that does suck because the the courteous the right thing to do would be appreciative of any anything someone's doing for you you know and uh, sometimes you, sometimes it can get discouraged because you do feel like you it, it builds up over time of you not being appreciated to the point where you're like hey you know like I need some kind of, you know, appreciation going on here to, to, to make me feel like what I'm doing for you or whatever the case may be is even noticeable. You know what I'm saying? It's even noticeable. Yeah. So I, I, I think, you know, that that has its pros and cons being that way. Yeah. Well, man, do you have any final words of encouragement, discouragement, Anything that you want to give the young men, the men, the old men, the humans of the planet? At <laughs> uh, the top of my head, not really, man. I just want to say thank you for having me. Um, I, I think this this healthy dialogue between two people um, needs to happen more. You know, um, I only think I was I want to say is going off what you said earlier about. Um, men who like need helping things and feeling like too prideful um, to admit that you need that help. Um, I will say that pride can either be what makes you or it kills you, you know. Um, it, it be, I've been in some sucky situations before, you know, 
where if I had let my pride carry me through them or whatever, I would have never got through them at all. I would have I would have stifled myself along the way. And I think for a lot of men, it's hard for them to swallow their pride. So they try to do everything on, on, on their own. And I just want to say to the men out there who are listening that that's not reality. You know, uh, we as a people are meant to be in a community and to help in hands of one another, you know, and there's nothing ever wrong with admitting that at all. Yeah. And one day I'll get there. <laughs> one day. <laughs> one day. One day. Hey, day baby, baby steps, man. Baby steps. But man, I thank you for uh for coming on. Like I said, um fourth episode. I think this is a uh, is going on strong. And if you ever want to come back, you know, you know where to find me. You're one of the few people that know how to find me. Um <laughs> but yeah, man, I Thank you for being in my life for almost 20 years, um, helping me through some of the bad situations, enjoying the good situations with me. Uh, it's been crazy, and you know that. Um, but, you know, I wish you all the best. I'm saying it's like, I'm never going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but uh, I wish you the best on that interview Tuesday. Um, I hope you get it. Um, I, I hope we both come up this year because um, we both need it. And it's been, it's been rough. Yeah, it's 2011 all over again. Mm. Yeah. Well, man, thanks for having me, man. You know, and um, to the people watching, make sure you give this video a like, share it to, with your friends, you know, um, support, support my brother out here in his endeavors in these streets well in thank you <laughs> thank everybody for watching this is episode four and i am new never you and if you didn't new well by the end of this video i hope you do